Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one, Dan? We are watching The Eternals. Oh, boy. Thank <laughs> God. I was wondering when we were going to get to this one. This is going to be a good one. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a new superhero movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And it's a team of superheroes, right? Oh, boy. We're talking a speedster, a lady with ancient weapons, a super strong guy that flies and shoots beams from his eyes. Yeah, then there's Batman and Aquaman. You're not in the right <laughs> offices, my dude. Oh, no, I'm talking about the Eternals. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, great. So who are the main characters in this thing? Oh, we've got some great main characters. We've got Cersei and Icarus. Okay, good, good, good. And Thena. And Gilgamesh. Oh, a couple more. Okay. And also Kingo and Makari. You're still going. And that's it for the characters other Nobody than Sprite and people. Druid. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So those are the Eternals. Also, Ajax and Fastos. Okay, and you have enough time to introduce and develop all these characters? Maybe. Sounds no. like maybe this should be a Disney Plus series, you know? Give this all a bit more breathing room. Well, we could shove them into a single movie. It's fine. Well, okay then. So what's <laughs> the know, deal man. with these characters? Oh, well, they've been around for thousands of years doing stuff like standing in a line and staring in the same direction. <laughs> direction dramatically <laughs> nice having philosophical conversations but only at golden hour why even talk at any other time of day there's no point and also some of these characters are in love with each other oh they are yeah like when icarus first wakes up he sees this other eternal and he's smitten so he's like hi i'm icarus and she's like i'm sassy oh being sassy is tight <laughs> oh, no, sorry, her name is cersei she just has a british accent i still stand by what i said fair enough so these eternals were sent by a celestial to protect humans right okay so then why didn't they help out when Thanos attacked. Good ah, question. We'll see, they were instructed to only fight these deviant monsters and to not interfere in human affairs. Oh. Okay. And, you know, also they introduce technology to humans, which humans then use to kill each other. Okay, that feels like getting involved in human conflict. Mm, Somehow that bit. doesn't count. Oh, okay, and so you said they all have powers? They do, yeah. One of them has super strength, one of them can make illusions and is a child, and another one could do mind control, which obviously he's not allowed to use. And these Eternals were created by Celestials to go fight Deviants. That's right. And why not give them each all the powers? Unclear. So anyway, they wiped <laughs> out all these Deviants like 500 years ago, and then they kind of split up. Okay. But then Deviants start popping up again, and Ajax gets killed. Oh, she's one of the characters, I think. I'm almost <laughs> sure of it. That's right, yeah. We'll learn a little more about her later, but for now, just be sad about that, okay? I'll try, but I don't really know who that is, to be honest. <laughs> so now that the Deviants are back and an Eternal is dead, they gotta get the band back together. Oh, boy. And so... You know, there are so many characters that that pretty much takes up the whole movie. Oh, oh it does, God. okay. Yeah, oh, no. like they go pick up Kingo, who's now a Bollywood star, so that's fun. That's fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, and side note, I already have Kumail Nanjiani interested in playing the role. Oh, you do? Yeah, he's super motivated. He said he's gonna work out for like a year to get in Marvel shape, you know, like crazy ripped and muscular. Oh, you know what would be funny? If we have him do all that work and then we don't even give him one of those classic Marvel shirtless scenes. Oh, that's a hilarious <laughs> prank. Okay, let's do that. A very good prank. So then then what happens? Well, we're also gonna find out the real reason they were all sent to Earth to stop deviants from killing humans. And why is that? Well, see, once the Earth reaches the necessary population, a celestial can be born from the Earth's core, and everyone on the planet will die. Oh, no. Yeah, it's pretty serious, and the Eternals have unknowingly been doing this a lot, but every time a celestial is born, they get their memories wiped. Okay, so if that's how new celestials are born, it definitely feels like it would have been in their interest to get involved in the Thanos situation of wiping out half of all population. Yes. Maybe, but see, the thing is, we already didn't introduce the Eternals into the Avengers movies, so I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about this. Oh, yeah, okay, let me get off of that thing. Oh, I should also mention that there's this one deviant monster that's, like, evolving and growing intelligence every time he kills an Eternal. Oh, boy, I bet that's gonna come into play later. Not particularly, no. <laughs> okay, he's like, oh, man, I guess we're all just pawns of Celestials, huh? And then he's gonna show up in the final fight and just kind of get killed. Feels like an interesting concept to flesh out more. Well, there's no time. You know we're doing like eight-hour Disney Plus Marvel shows now. You can't explore this stuff. No, 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 no. Take all these fascinating ideas and characters and shove them into a single movie and then just kind of speed run through them. Well, okay then. So what does happen in the final fight? Oh, well, see, we're gonna find out that Icarus is actually cool with the plan of the Celestials. He's okay with everybody dying. Oh. And he's the one who killed Ajax by pushing her into a pile of deviants. Very rude. And so Sprite, <laughs> who's rude, secretly yeah. in love with him, she follows him and then Kingo is like, I don't even want to be in the third act, so he leaves. Right, I mean, <laughs> up to him, I guess. So how does the movie end? Well, the Eternals need to stop
stop this giant, massive celestial that's actively emerging from the Earth's core. Sounds like it's going to be hard to do that. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely, Barely an, an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, he turns out they can amplify one of the Eternal's powers, so Cersei just turns this thing to, like, marble. And a giant being emerging from the core of the Earth that doesn't have any effect on the Earth, you know, like, planet-wise? Nah. No. Oh, okay, Guess great. Not. All right. Right. Cersei's like, hey, Sprite, I think I still have some power left from whatever that was, so I can turn you into a human since you hate being a child. And that's a thing she knows how to do? Sure, yeah, okay. Well, well, I guess they're pretty good friends, huh? Yeah, except for Sprite literally stabbing her in the back just a few <laughs> minutes <laughs> no. earlier. Oh, my God. And then Icarus feels super guilty, so he flies into the sun. Well, I mean, if you're gonna have a character named Icarus, gotta fly that guy into the sun for sure. Makes yeah, sense. Our hands are kind of tight on that one for sure. And then a big celestial shows up and kidnaps some of the Eternals. Oh, wow, what happens with that? <laughs> Hopefully this movie does well so we can expand on that. <laughs> oh, that's how the movie ends. It is, yeah. Well, I mean, we're gonna have our obligatory mid credit scene. I mean, yeah, we gotta do that. That's tradition, you know? Remember when it was just Nick Fury walking around recruiting people into the Avengers? Yeah, simpler times. That is that is not where we're at anymore. Oh. Right, what happens in this one? <laughs> An alcoholic no. troll pops out of a space portal and introduces one of the guys from One Direction. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, that may troll. as well happen, sure. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like it could be a fantastic series. This is this is a movie. I said what I said. But yeah. anyway, no matter what we do, people are gonna love it. I mean, this is the MCU we're talking about. Very true. No, they did not love it. No, they did not. <laughs> and they had a right to not love that one. I am with them on this. Oh, yes. We're all, we're all standing together this time, guys. So you know, I didn't even know who these guys were prior to this movie coming out. The Eternals there. So when they were introducing every single one of their characters, like, you should just know who these guys are. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of lost. I'm like, you make it sound like they've been famous on Earth since the dawn of dinosaurs. But okay. Well, they've been on Earth that long, but apparently, yeah, nobody knows who they are. And I'm, I'm with you. I had no idea who the Eternals were until this movie came out. Producer guy there has a great point. You really should have made this a series. Because there's so many characters here, you really had no opportunity to do, there to develop the dynamics between them in such a short film. Yeah, they failed on this one, I think. You, you really tried to cram too much into a two-hour span, or three-hour, whatever it turned out to be. And it's weird, because when you look at the, the Disney series, the complaint is always the opposite. They don't have enough content for that. Here, you actually had a, a huge cast of characters you could have actually developed, worked on the relationships between them, gone through their past, seen how they've influenced the world over time, see the mythology behind them, because with the names like Gilgamesh and Athena, we know that obviously they had meaning to different civilizations. Sure, they had, yeah, because this, this, this goes back into mythology here, yeah. so, which means that you were influencing that. Yeah, like you could have done a whole series just showing all this stuff with these characters and kind of fleshing out the whole thing with the um, giant creatures. Oh, I, are you talking about the, the ones that are that are kind of giving them the orders and what to the do? The Celestials. The Celestials, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, you could have, you know, introduced them, shown their role in the universe, you know, maybe kind of explain the reason why they weren't getting involved with Thanos and all that. Instead, you tried to cram too much into a movie, and it didn't work because you really didn't give your characters time to get fleshed out. And for that matter, their powers are no more powerful than anything Thor has, from what I've seen. Some of them are actually kind of lame, to be honest with you. Exactly. Like, if, like the famous thing is that she uses weapons. Well, big freaking deal. Anybody can use a right? weapon. <laughs> What is Icarus do? He shoots beams of light out of his eyes? Yeah. Big big whoop there. I mean, Thor uses a hammer and summons lightning. Yeah. So I don't get it. Or or Hulk turns into a giant rage monster. Like that's the thing. Like they have useful abilities, but the characters themselves are just not all that unique. And they're not that interesting either. Yeah. I don't really see what they were trying to do here, but I think you had the wrong people in charge of this altogether. Otherwise they probably would have done like producer guy was suggesting and made it into a series yeah or at least pitched it as a series yeah i think it would have worked out fine in that format you know take some time to work on it but but just tr trying to cram everything into a movie no you barely had time for your own plot let alone character development it's not gonna work yeah too bad i kind of agree with them too on the point of you know why did you not create these eternals to have all the different abilities instead of just giving them each in one individual ability i don't know like why don't you just make a whole race of supermen but weren't they also wiping their memories every time they, uh, every time a celestial was born? Yeah. Those two facts there probably go hand in hand. They don't want everybody to have singular the same powers because it'd probably be a giant struggle. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's something to consider. I mean, we did see the Eternals actually defeat one of the celestials, so I guess theoretically that's a concern. The one that was coming up out of Earth? Yeah. 
Yeah. Poor Earth, man, has been going through some shit. <laughs> okay, that that's like the kind of stuff that you don't recover from. And for that fact, I, I remember the end of this movie, there were just like giant limbs sticking out of the planet after that. Yeah. Uh, like... So that's just never going to get resolved now. I could be mistaken, but I don't think the Celestials ever come up again in the MCU, have they? So it's like, what was the point of introducing these you no know, big bad beings who are all over the universe and then not doing anything else with them? I don't know. I don't even know what they're what the whole point of a Celestial is. They're born out of a dying planet. And thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Only death can pay for life. I guess. Is that how that works? I don't that's know. how it works in Game of Thrones. So. All right. Guys, I think we're just going to end it right there. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. Also, if you feel like supporting this channel, consider joining up and becoming a member. Uh, it's not required, and Dan certainly wouldn't recommend it at all, guys, but we'd love to have you anyway. Just do it. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Later, guys.